Today, we're going to evaluate this really awesome integral from 0 to infinity of x times the natural log of x divided by the square of the hyperbolic cosine of x. And to evaluate it, we're going to need a couple of tools. The first of these tools is this integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 divided by 1 plus e to the x, where s is a complex number with positive real part. And this evaluates quite beautifully to the gamma function at s times the Dirichlet eta function at s. Link in the description below for a proof from one of my Instagram posts. It's a pretty simple yet elegant solution development and the result is just gorgeous. So do check that out. And the second one of these tools is the derivative of the Dirichlet eta function at 1, which I proved as part of the evaluation of a previous integral to be gamma times log 2 minus log 2 squared divided by 2. Again, link in the description below for the evaluation of that integral, including the proof for this derivative of the Dirichlet eta function. And all of this seems pretty damn cool, but how on earth are we going to relate our target integral to the integral from our toolkit. Well, that's where Feynman's trick comes into play. We're going to define an integral function i of some parameter t. And how should we define the integral function? Well, we should try the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the t divided by cosh square x dx. So we have a polynomial in x as the numerator, which is easier to deal with than the product of x and log x. But how does this integral function yield the target integral? Well, if you differentiate x of t partially with respect to t, then you get x to the t times log x, which is exactly the numerator of your target integral in the case of t being equal to 1. So that means the plan is to evaluate the derivative of the integral function i at t equals 1, and that will yield our target integral. Okay, sounds good. And that's exactly how we're going to proceed. But how do we evaluate the integral function in the first place? Well, taking a look at it, you have x to the t divided by the squared cosh of x. So let's expand this hyperbolic cosine first up. So let's write this as i of t being the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the t divided by e to the x plus e to the negative x squared. And this is to be divided by 2, so you can expand using 4 and just write this as 4 times the integral. Okay, cool. And we can now perform an integration by parts. Now, for the integration by parts, I'm going to expand using e to the 2x. 2x because I have the squared term in the denominator. So multiplying upstairs and downstairs by e to the 2x, I can write i of t as 4 times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the t times e to the 2x divided by e to the 2x plus 1 squared dx, where I'm going to integrate this term and differentiate the x to the t term. And notice for the antiderivative, I need a factor of 2 here so I can borrow one of the twos outside and I'm left with twice the integral. So this implies on integration by parts that i of t equals 2 times x to the t. And because of the antiderivative, I'm going to have a negative sign here. And we're dividing by 1 plus e to the 2 times x. The limits are 0 and infinity minus. But because of the extra negative sign, you have a plus sign now integral from 0 to infinity of 2 times x to the t minus 1 times t on differentiation divided by 1 plus e to the 2x integration with respect to x. And t is just a constant in the x world, right? So we can write this outside the integration operator. Okay, cool. And the evaluation of the limits for this term is pretty convenient because in the limit as x goes to 0, the polynomial term goes to 0, 
and in the limit as x goes to infinity, infinity this one plus uh, this one by one plus e to the two x term goes to zero as x approaches infinity. Okay, that is pretty convenient that this entire term collapses to a big fat zero, and this implies that i of t equals two times t times the integral from zero to infinity of x to the t minus one divided by one plus e to the two x dx. We're now pretty close to the integral from our toolkit and all we need is one more substitution. So let 2x equal u and this implies that dx equals one half of du. And this implies that i of t now equals two times t times the integral still from zero to infinity as the limits are not bothered by our transformation. Now, what does x to the t minus one mean? Well, x equals two to the negative one times u, right? So x to the t minus one is in fact two to the one minus t times u to the t minus one divided by one plus e to the u. And the differential element is now du by two and the twos cancel out pretty nicely. And this two to the one minus t is just a constant for integration purposes. So write this outside as two to the one minus t times t times the integral exactly from our toolkit. And this here will evaluate to gamma t times the Dirichlet eta function at t. So this is the structure of the integral function i of t. And notice that we can write this due to the recursion formula of the gamma function as gamma t plus one. So this implies that i of t can finally be written as two to the one minus t times gamma t plus one times Dirichlet eta t. And all that's left now is to differentiate it and evaluate it at t equals one to recover the target case. So on differentiation with respect to t, I have the derivative of i being equal to a lot of stuff. And what is that a lot of stuff? Well, I have two to the one minus t times log two. And because of the chain rule, you have this negative sign here multiplied by gamma t plus one times eta t. Plus applying the product rule for differentiation, of course, I have two to the one minus t times gamma prime t plus one times the eta function at t plus two to the one minus t times gamma t plus one times eta prime at t. And wait, I can do better than that. Yeah, slightly better. Anyway, we're interested in the case of t being equal to one, right? So this implies that our target integral, which is the derivative of i with respect to t at t equals one, equals, now all of the two to the one minus t terms become two to the one minus ones, which are two to the zeros, which are ones. So you have negative log two here. Oh, terribly sorry about that. Negative log two. Uh, gamma t plus one becomes gamma one plus one or gamma two, which is one factorial. So yeah, that is just one. I'm not writing that out. Times eta one, which equals, I'll get back to eta one later, plus uh, gamma prime at two times eta one again, plus the, wait, I'm gonna need some more writing space. So let me just move things around and get rid of the implies that sign. I already said it implies something, right? So plus, again, this is one, this is one, and you're left with eta prime at one. And what exactly is eta one? Well, eta s equals the sum over the positive integers k of negative one to the k plus one divided by k to the s. And once you plug in s equals one, then all you're left with is the series expansion for log two, which is again, pretty convenient. So this implies that i equals negative log squared two plus the derivative of the gamma function at two is one minus the order Mascheroni constant. Link in, in the description below for an Instagram write-up on various derivatives of the gamma function. And eta one is again log two. And I already wrote out the derivative of eta at one 
back when I mentioned the tools, right? So that was gamma log two minus the square of log two divided by two. And we see that the gamma log two terms cancel out pretty nicely. And you're left with log two minus three halves of the squared logarithm of two. And you can just factor out a log two term and you're left with log two, no wait, you're left with one minus three halves of log two. And that was pretty wild. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you, see you next time.